You can leave your cameras on. I'd like to welcome all you all to the Joint Scrutiny Committee to be held in Microsoft uh, Teams on today, Tuesday, the 8th, 15th of December 2020, to consider the matters contained in the following agenda. This meeting will be held and recorded and made available to view via the Council website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audits of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via this recording in the Council's website at www.cafilly.gov.uk. Right then, Kath, you there? Yes, Jay. Thank you. Have we had apologies to Kath? Yes, Jay, we have apologies from Councillor John Bevan, from Councillor Christine Forehead, from Councillor Gaynor Oliver, from Councillor John Roberts, and Councillor Margaret Sargent and Ben Sablatinsky. Thank you. Will you know of the roll call, please, for attendance? Yes, Chair. Uh, members, I'll call you the names of the committee members. Can you please confirm your attendance? Councillor Mike Adams. Present, Chair. Councillor Alan Collins. Present, Chair. Councillor Donna Cushion. Present, Chair. Councillor Tudor Davis. Oh, yeah. Councillor Colin Ellsbury, I don't see him on the list. No. Councillor Mark Evans. Present, Chair. Councillor Anne Gay. Present. Councillor June Gale. Present. Councillor Rob Goff. Present. Councillor Lindsay Hardin. Present. Councillor Alan Higgs is not showing. Councillor Adrian Hussey. Present. Councillor Steve Kent's not showing. Councillor Gez Kirby. Here. Uh, Councillor Ariana Leonard and Councillor Philippa Leonard are not showing. Councillor Bob Owen. Present. Councillor Denver Priest is not showing. Councillor Diane Price. Present. Councillor John Scriven's not showing. Councillor Andrew Whitcomb. Present, Chair. Councillor Tom Williams. Present, Chair. And Councillor Walter Williams. Present, Chair. That's Thank everyone, you. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Cap. Item two, declaration of interests. Councillors and officers are reminded that they have personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any of the items of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Any declarations of interest? None at all? Yes, Chair. Um, I got my hand up. All right. um, I want clarification, please, um, from officers. Well, under Agenda Item 3, the contained within the report, there was response received from Gettlinger Community Council. As I'm on the Community Council, do I need to declare um, an interest in that item? I would say no, Chair, because the, the council itself um, was uh, um, asked to consult as an all town and community councils um, in terms of the evidence gathering of the, the task and finish group. So I should think that's that's fine. OK, thank you. All right. Now, the agenda, as you re read it, it's uh, three, uh, two items. I am now say I, I now suggest that we now reverse the, um, the two reports. In other words, we take enforced a sale policy first because of the officers will be waiting a long time before we finish with item uh, three. We all agree that we have that item, item four first. Anyone object? No. Right, then we go on to uh, item four, enforcement 
sale policy, which is pages 31 to 42. And Alan Dalamo, is the, is the cabinet member here? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah thanks for sure Morgan's going to take us through first, Chair. Oh, he's here, is he? I, I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't uh, say he was here. I am Sean? here, Councillor Davis. <coughs> um, I might have to switch my camera. All right, we can see your face now. Yeah, I, I think uh, Councillor Morgan's screen is frozen. Oh. Yeah, can you hear me? I'm having a network. I can hear you. Please speak then if you can't, we can't see you. Okay, so the purpose of this... Well, we can see you, but we can't hear you now. Yeah, I've lost your sound, yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, Chair. Yes, no. Yeah, I yeah. think we haven't, heard, we, haven't heard I think we haven't heard nothing yet because you've been mute. Okay. You start, I, from, start from the start. Okay, so the purpose of the report, the enforced sale policy, this is a mechanism by which problematic long term empty houses. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, we've lost you. Uh, I think you better go with Alan Dalimore, Chair. I think that was a very sensible suggestion. Mr. Dalimore, please. Thanks, Chair. I'll just pick up on, on where the councillor left off. So basically, the purpose of the report is to seek the views of the scrutiny committee on the proposed enforced sales policy prior to its presentation to Cabinet for approval. Um, the enforced sales policy really is a mechanism by which problematic long term empty private sector dwellings, derelict commercial properties and land are brought back into beneficial use where council debts have been registered against the property but not discharged. And what we have, Chair, if you don't mind me sort of um, summarising in the rest of the report authorities in the region have the enforced sales policy as a tool to use in the armory against um, long-term empty properties, but we don't. And what we're looking to do is, is, is even that up now by bringing this through the proper channels to get it adopted as a policy that we can use. And there's a lot of work that's being done on empty properties at this moment in time. You as members will probably be aware of the fact that, you know, there is an agreement now to set up an empty properties team within housing. And that team will use this policy as a tool in their armory to bring empty properties back into use. And also, uh, Welsh Government themselves have put a lot of time and effort into appointing consultants to help deal with empty properties. And just for your awareness, there is going to be some training late on in January for senior members and for um, senior officers to be trained up on the best use of tools at their disposal to bring empty properties back into use. So in summary, Chair, I'm willing to take any questions on the report, but I'd just like to reiterate that this really is going to be used as a last resort where we've tried everything within our powers to get property owners to bring properties back into use uh, to no avail. Can I now pass it on to the chair, Andrew, of Housing and Regeneration you, Security Thank Committee, because it's your remit. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Um, can I, before I, I open it up to the, the wider floor, I'm conscious I've got my hand to take it down. Uh, can I thank the authors of this report? I, I must say this is one of the most enjoyable reports I've read in a long time. Um, I think it's extremely well put together, extremely concise. Uh, it says exactly what it intends to do, and I, and I commend you. I, I, I really do. It is a, a very good report. <coughs> but I shall open up for debate now, Councillor Mike Adams. Thank you, Chair. Jo is it joint chair tonight? Yes. Joint yes, chair. chair. Okay. Yes, yeah. no, it, it's just a quick question for, for Alan. Um, 
just say I've read through this one really very interesting report today and it was very well produced and easy to read so thanks uh, thanks for that uh, and it is only about empty properties uh, Alan is it not about properties that there may have been debts occurred over many years perhaps or even a short time and we need to make some progress on anywhere they're still lived in as a domestic property will never be included? That's definitely my understanding of the policy, councillor. OK, thanks for that. That's what I was expecting you to say from the wording already there. And uh, that's reassuring. Thank you very much. Councillor Goff, you've got your hand raised. Sorry, yeah, yeah. If I can, uh, uh, just a, a question. Uh, is there going to be a weighting against what actually brings the action into place? Is the fact that there's a debt outstanding against the property or the fact that property could be vacant for seven years, do they carry equal weighting or does the debt trigger action being taken? If you look at the report in more detail, councillor, there's a number of criteria set out in section 5.7 and they've got to take off all of those criteria for us to be able to go forward with the import sales route. Right. So nothing's got any particular weight in, Al, that if, if a property's been vacant for, say, seven or ten years, that it's got to meet the trigger they of got, several got, criteria to kick it they off. They have to meet all of those triggers, councillor. As I said, it, it is really going to be used as our as a weapon of last resort available to us. And I think if you look at section 5.8 in the report, that actually outlines what we will do with the property owners to try and get to a position where they bring the property back into beneficial use before we go down the info sales route. OK, thanks, Al. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, uh, Councillor Goff. Councillor Bob Owen. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, question for Alan. Can you give us an idea of the numbers of properties we're talking? Um, the report talks about, or, or the actual policy talks about the, a database. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, we're going to go chasing the finances and whatever. Any, are we looking at, you know, 50 properties? Are we looking at 100, 200? You know, sort of a rough idea of the sort of money that we're chasing and the numbers of properties that we're chasing? Yeah, I've got Claire Davis with me here today from Private Housing, who knows a little bit more about the database. If I can bring in Claire now to maybe expand on that. Hi, Claire Davis, Private Sector Housing. Um, so our database records all the properties that are currently vacant for six months or longer on April 1st of each year. And that information is received from council tax. Um, and the figure fluctuates between approximately 1,000 and 1,500. So that would be the number of properties that would be empty on that particular day on April 1st. And then obviously we would work um, in relation to those properties to try and get them back into beneficial use. Many of those will become, will return to use just through the market, you know, they'll get sold on with no local authority action. So obviously the ones that we would be dealing with would be the ones that are more problematic in our communities. But we wouldn't be expecting to do a lot of enforced sales during a year. Um, you know, to date we haven't done any, but I think moving forward it would be, you know, in the single figures initially about how many we would get um, that we'd have to enforce the sale on. Okay. Thanks, Rowan. Do you have to return? No, that's uh, that's enough information for me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rowan. Thanks, thank you, Chair. Um, quick uh, question to uh, Mr. Dalimo. On uh, 5.9, it's to say uh, where an owner cannot be traced or a property is unregistered. Um, on the database, have we got any um, idea of how many properties are not, not registered? I, I, if I may, Chair, I'm going to play Scrum Half again and pass that over to Clay because I'm not an expert on the database. 
Um, the database just records the, the property details the council tax give us. So at that point, it would just be, you know, who's who's saying they're responsible for that property. Um, in relation to any enforcement work that we would do, obviously we'd establish with the land registry whether that property was um, registered with them, and a lot of properties are. But where the property hasn't moved through any sales in the last probably about 20 years, 20 to 25 years, then it could remain unregistered with the land registry. And the, the person would have paper deeds, if you like, the old the old style paper deeds. So those properties are getting fewer and fewer over time because obviously as properties change hands, you are now required to register with the land registry and have been since back um, approximately 20, 25 years ago. So um, I haven't got an exact figure, but there would be a lower amount that are not registered because any sale these days triggers a registration with the land registry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. David. Thank you much. I, I take it uh, the hand raised for Councillor Bob Bowen is a legacy hand? It's gone. There are no other hands raised. Um, the recommendations for the report are on pay, are at item 3.1 and 3.2. Chair, I think Councillor June Gale wants Gale. to come in, but she hasn't put her hand up. Ah, Councillor Gale. Yeah. Um, how long does it take from the time of the compulsory purchase order for a house? How long does it take for the council to take over it? That's all, Okay. The way I read that question, Chair, is how long does it take for us to go through the enforced sales yeah. route until we take ownership? And I don't think I can give you a clear indication on that because each individual property will be dealt with differently, probably. But I would have thought the mechanism that has to happen is that we have to give them due time to consider you know all of the options open to them and set out in paragraph 5.8 if we do then go down the enforced sales route there is a period of time where we have to get evaluation on the property <coughs> then we have to offer it to the registered rsls and kafili homes and if they don't take ownership of the property then we've got to take it to public auction so it could be several months in all honesty, councillor, before yeah. all of those mechanisms are put in place. Thank, Thank you, Mr. I believe, Matt, before I go to uh, Councillor Walter Williams, um, uh, Martin Woodland's put, put his hand up. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to enforced sales, um, there's a number of procedures uh, uh, that's got to be followed, just alluded to by Mr. Dallymore. Um, <clears throat> obviously, notices have got to be served um, on the various landowners. Um, if, if the notices are not complied with, then that actually triggers the enforced sale procedure. Um, but in relation to timeline, I think um, Alan was probably correct in uh, the sort of timeline he's given in between six and seven months, because what members got to realise as well, um, enforced sale is just one tool that can be used in bringing ruinous and dilapidated properties back into use. Um, you know, should um, the landowner um, actually comply with the notice, then that stops the enforced sale procedure dead in its tracks. Um, but it is a very useful procedure. Um, I've been involved, um, you know, in this type of work now for about 14, 15 years. I think the most I did in my former authority was 14 enforced sales in one year. Um, like I said, you know, it's bringing a lot of bad properties back into use, you know, which is a, a blight upon the landscape um, for residents of the county borough. And, um, you know, it's a good process to follow. It's quick, it's clean. And, and also as well, um, what members have got to realise as well, it's a, it's a cost neutral um, process to the council because all our costs can be netted off, you know, whether it's cost and registration of charges at the land registry, um, officer time, legal costs, um, it's all deducted from um, from from the purchase price, and um, you know it's a gain gain situation for both the county borough and its residents. Chair, yeah. thanks, Mr. Woodruff. Can I ask all members who, who are not taking uh, asking questions to turn their mics off? Because I can hear some conversations um, and a television program in the background. So if they can remember to turn their mics off, please. 
Councillor Walter Williams. Yes, thank you, Chair. A uh, question for uh, Mr. Dallimore. Uh, under marketing and sale at the end, it says that uh, sales to a preferred purchaser must be approved by the relevant director. Who else decides who's going to, where the purchase goes, you know? Is there. Hello? Okay. You've frozen on us. I, I, I think I got the gist of what you were asking, uh, Councillor Williams. Uh, Mr. Dallymore, can you um, elaborate for Councillor Williams? Well, well it, 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 the, the policy says a relevant director because, in some instances, it'll be a commercial property, and in some instances, it'll be a residential property, and they sit under different directorates, and therefore it'll be up to the director to, to give that approval. I think that's the short answer there, Trey. Is that okay, Councillor Williams? Yeah, um, who else does it then? Who else decides where, where the property goes? But I, I, I think that's outlined within the actual um, report, which is really a summary of the policy itself, whereby there's a defined route where initially the property is um, valued by a qualified valuer. Then it's yeah. offered first to registered RSLs and Caffili Homes. And if for several reasons outlined in the report, either that they don't come up to the valuation of the property or they don't feel it's suitable for their stock, it can then be offered by uh, auction. Yeah. OK, thanks so much. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Are there yep. any more? I can't see any more hands up. Does anybody else want to make a contribution? If not, uh, the recommendations are at item 3.1 and 3.2 on page 31 of your pack. Can I ask for a mover and a seconder for the report, please? Move I move, Chair. Chair. Um, I, I, I have two points at once. Yes, can we move to a second? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we've got a mover and a second there. Uh, the voting will be via forms in the chat room. So we'll, if we open the chat room, if anybody has difficulty, um, please speak up after the 30 seconds we allow for the vote in. Uh, it, the, the voting form is now up, uh, so I'll open the vote in. Yeah, I've had to um, dial in on my telephone, so I don't seem to be able to vote. So, can, can I ask for your vote, Councillor Gay? Yeah, uh, um, I'm for. Thank you. And Chair, I haven't got a yes on mine, but mine is yes. Thank you, Councillor Price. I think that's all of us have voted. Now, I, I think it's unanimous. That's majority, mm. Chair. That's 13 votes for. Yeah, thank Andrew, you very much indeed. 13 can I just, all majority. Andrew, can much. I just confirm that I haven't voted because the process has changed and I can't find where to vote. <laughs> um, if you go to the top of your screen, Councillor Collis, yes. uh, you will see uh, there's two people and next to that is a speech bubble. If When we go to votes uh, next time round, I'll record your vote now verbally, but when we go to votes next time, if you click on that, there's a voting panel comes up on the extreme right hand side of your screen. And you might have to scroll down here to, uh, you might have to, to yeah. Access. Thank you, Councillor. So you might have to scroll down now. OK, but the report is carried. Thank you very much, members. I shall now hand back to my my colleague, Councillor Tudor Davis, and we'll take the next few next. items. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, we are sharing the uh, agenda a bit. So uh, we now go back, obviously, to item three. Caffili uh, County Council, Borough Council, Car Park Task and Fit Group Report and Recommendations from pages 1 to 30. 
And for, to kick it off is uh, Councillor Goff, who's going to address the committee. Thank you, Chair. Can I firstly place on record, and I'd like the, the committee to reckon, or both scrutinies actually, to reckon, uh, to accept my recommendation to express our thanks to the officers who've put a lot of time and effort in because the uh, task and finish group was set up in 2018. Uh, it was postponed initially for the implementation of civil enforcement. And then it was kicked off again and we got it by COVID-19. So it was a difficult one. The first members of the task and finish group had the opportunity of visiting car parks. The second group of uh, councillors didn't have that opportunity, but officers have done their darndest to make sure that as much information as possible, including maps and um, other information has been available to allow councillors to make informed decisions. So if we could place on record from both scrutinies, our thanks to those officers and indeed to the actual members, both sets of members that actually worked on the task and finish group. Can we record that if please? I can then, All the members agree that we record our thanks for the members on the task and finish group and also the officers who were involved with it. Yes. All yes, agree with report that? Yes. Thank you very if much. If I can, Chair, then go on um, through the report. Um, it was pretty general. We were tasked to go out and look at all aspects of, of um, car parks uh, and then come back with some recommendations then for the scrutinies to um, look at and decide on. Um, during that process as well, the change went to two scrutinies, which was why the membership of, of the task and finish group was made up of members of both scrutinies. So if I move to the recommendations, uh, and the first one there is on 3.2. Uh, currently, across the county borough, there are several different rates. Caffili rates at 80p an hour, and then they subsequently move up at different proportions. In Blackwood, it's 70p for the first hour, and then it increases proportionally up to a full day. In Ustermanach, it's the same thing. So the task and finish group are recommending that uh, we standardise the charges across the borough. So whatever that rate is, to park for an hour and subsequently with the relevant increases, that... Um, Wherever you park in Caffili, that would be the rate. Uh, the recommendation is, I think the highest rate is in Caffili at 80p. Blackwood, who seem to contribute the most income from car parking, it's 70. So the task and finish group, I've had no uh, negative responses to it, are recommending that we um, recommend the Cabinet through the scrutiny committees. There is a standard charge of 70p for the first hour and then whatever the relevant charges are accumulating through to a full day's rates. I do if any you, members of the scrutiny committee got a, any view on that? Oh, Andrew, we will now take over from you as the co-chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Davis. Um, have any members got any particular views or opinions on a standardised rate? Um, personally, I, I would, I'm surprised that we haven't already got it, you know, and we, that the borough became the borough in 1996. And here we are 35 years later and there's still differences in car parking in different areas, which seems a, a bit strange to me. Councillor Mike Adams, you've your hand. Thank you, Chair. There are quite a number of uh, items on this through the recommendations. Are we going to uh, look at each one and vote on each one as we go through the, no. the long list? No, we're, we're going to try and have a have a discussion as as we go through the evening, uh, Mike, on each one, and then uh, I do a broad brush um, sort of uh, box poll, so we can put them into blocks to vote on blocks of them. All uh, which, right. Which, which seems that to, to be the, the the easiest way to to do this because it is a, a large number of uh, recommendations. Exactly. That, that does seem sensible uh, to go through that uh, yeah. in the list as a as we can read them. Are they then put in in blocks that are cohabitable? Well, Kath uh, Forbes Thompson has just raised the hand, so I'm presuming she's going to give me some advice on that. Thank you. Okay Thank you, then. Thank you yeah. Chair. Um, can I suggest, uh, in the first instance, we just introduce the the recommendations. Um, then we ask if the officers want to make a comment before we ask the members their views, because me members may obviously want to take into account both the 
the views of the task and finish group and also the views of officers before they give the indication. And what we intended to do is to go through the recommendations after we've listened to, to the, the officers and the members of the task and finish group and just get a, a, a simple indication by hands up. And if there seems to be a general approval for the recommendation, I'll group all those ones together and we can vote on block for those ones and then pick out any that may have potential changes or um, disagreements and we'll do them individually, if that seems like a sensible approach to. That seems like an extremely sensible approach. Kath, um, right. thanks very much. With Before that in we... mind then, Chair, I'll continue to read the recommendation then. Uh, yeah. are, are we going to do uh, an officer input on each recommendation? Chair, I, I just got a quick question, please. Go ahead, Adrian. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, ju just for the record, um, I'd like to move a motion that uh, 3.12 be removed from the report because uh, the cabinet have already uh, extended uh, the free park until the 30, uh, 31st of March uh, 2021. So um, just for the record, if we could remove uh, 3.12 before Councillor Goss actually get, gets to it. Yeah, I would have got there. When I got there, they would have said that then that had been removed. But yeah, that's fine. I haven't got a problem uh, with that. I, I need a seconder for that. I'll second that, and uh, th th Thank you. Um, I can we... Sorry. I'll ask Kat Bob Thompson for uh, advice. Can we just go to our hands up for that? Uh, Jay, what I suggest you do is, is to let Councillor Goff carry on. You've already got a move on a seconder for uh, 3.12. You yeah. can keep that. And then when you go back to that, we'll do a vote at the end. Right. Okay, you want thank, to you. Yeah. thank you very much, Kath. Uh, Councillor Goff, carry on. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, the second rec recommendation is 3.3. Point, uh, point, uh, point, point of uh, Chairman, the officers were going to respond on item yes. two. They, you... haven't, they haven't done that yet. Yeah, can I ask the officers to respond on item 3.2 then? Chair, I'm going to pass that one to Clive Campbell uh, in, in the meeting as Clive was the officer support to the task and finish group with Dustin Kate. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for members' information, so you can help you to make a, a, a fully informed uh, decision. Um, if you look at Appendix 2 of the report, I just draw your attention to the existing charge in tariff. Um, there are only really two outliers, <coughs> excuse me, to the existing charge in tariff, and that is the Oakdale, uh, sorry, not Oakdale, Oakfield Street car park in Ostrumunich, which is the uh, represents the lowest charge, but only by uh, by a small amount, and. The Twin Car Park in Philly, the Philly, which represents the highest tariff. Um, other than that, all the others in between are pretty much the same. When you take into account, some are geared, the tariff in some are geared towards long stay, and some are geared towards short stay. And the uh, the group did accept and support that there's still a need for that short stay, long stay difference to try and encourage um, workers, commuters into the, the longer stay car parks on the periphery of the towns and try and re retain the short stay car parks for a high turnover availability for shopping visitors. Um, also in the report, um, we've identified the financial implications of reducing the tariffs to the minimum, the existing minimum at uh, Oakfield Street. Uh, if all tariffs were aligned with that, then it would be in the order of a 40k, £40,000 per year reduction in income. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Um, so we then, we Obviously, the Councillor Goff's out, outlined the recommendation in 3.2, and, and Mr. Campbell's very kindly explained that if we move to the minimum charge, which I believe is what the recommendation says, um, that we would lose around £40,000 worth of income per annum. 
Um, so I've got to ask, is, is item 3.2 broadly supported or is it uh, something you wish to consider? And if you could broadly support it, could you put your hands up, please? I haven't put my hand up because I'm trying to quickly work out whether that's a majority. And I think it is. Yeah, that, 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 that's a majority. So if, if Cass could put that in one bracket for, for me, I'd be much appreciated. Chairman, <laughs> have you asked members who couldn't vote if they're going to cast their vote? I'm just about to do so now, uh, Councillor Davis. Uh, members who couldn't raise their hand, can I have you, uh, your opinions, please? Sorry, Andy, I'm having uh, difficulty with my connection and it's uh, stopping and starting, so I'm not sure what that last vote, um, right. I didn't quite catch all of it. Right. I'm uh, particularly the, interested in the bit relating to Oakfield surgery. Yeah, the, um, the, the recommendation in 3.2 is, is that we introduce a uniform uh, car parking charge rate across the, across the borough based on the current lowest uh, tariff, which is indeed the car park to which you just referred. Right, sorry, I'm, I'm having really trouble break, breaking up. Uh, I don't know if it's affected. The, the only reason that I'm, my concern with Oakfield is obviously people park there for the surgery. A very short term, sort of less than an hour. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that basically comes again. If you could tell me if you if you support the recommendation that we move to the lowest charge. So, d does it, lowest charge mean in the, the Oakfield surgery charge? The Oakfield surgery charge is the lowest. Yeah. So you would that would apply, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm in favour of that. Thank you very much, Councillor Gay. Uh, uh, Councillor Dan Price, uh, you've you've actually you've got your hand raised, so you voted in favour, yes? Yeah, no probs. Anybody else? Councillor so. Collis, you were having trouble before. Yes, I am. Councillor Gale, yes, thank I, you, Councillor Gale. I raised my hand. Um, okay. Thank you, June. Um, so that that's the first one done. You, Councillor Goff, you may move on to three point three. Sorry, sorry, Chair. It's uh, to remove the parking charges. At the five country parks agreed in 2014 yeah. in order to recognize the significant health benefits to residents. If you look at one, I do, if before the meeting, you would have seen that one of the appendices gives you um, an idea of the income generated by our country parks. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of time and effort collecting money in different things from these parks. They're not making money. The only one we had issue with was Cumcan, and Cumcan is heavily used. A lot of the users are out of county, so we felt there should be a charge still levied at Cumcan. But uh, apart from Darren, uh, Penalta, and the other parks, we recommend to encourage people to take more exercise and become fitter in this current climate that the charges are removed. Thank you, Councillor Goff. I don't know which officer is going to respond to that. Uh, but I, I, I will say that uh, obviously Kunkan Forest Drive is within my ward and I fully support that part of the recommendation. I don't know which of the officers is going to come back. Mr Campbell, I presume. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, very briefly, just to, again to highlight within the report the financial implications of that. Um, although uh, the income hasn't achieved the targets were originally envisaged, there is still an income. So to with uh, cease charging in those countryside car parks would have a near financial impact in the order of uh, £50,000 per annum. Is that including the income from Kumkan or excluding? That excludes the uh, income from Kumkan because the, the recommendation is only for the countryside car parks excluding Kumkan. Thank you, Mr Campbell. I think that's um, been adequately described by what comes to Goff and Mr Campbell. Again, using your hands, can I have a broad indication of whether or not you support the, the recommendation to remove the car parking charges? No. 
Councillor Gay. Ah, your hand is raised, Councillor Gay. Again, that's... I've managed to find out a way to do it, yeah. <laughs> well done, Anne. And, and, and June, are you on support, yes? Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, June. Uh, Councillor Collis, have you been able... Yes, I can see your hand as well, that's yeah. great. Okay, so that's uh, in, in broad support for that measure. Uh, Councillor Goff, can you invite you to uh, three points for? Mr. Chairman, Thank you, Chair. board, uh, could, could, how many members are, are available to vote? Because we need to have that. If it is, a, if someone and a small number vote for it, they need to go for those against. Yeah, how many members are actually uh, are going to vote tonight? Cat Pope Thompson has got a got a hand raised. The cat. Hi, Chair. There's 16 members on the on the meeting this evening, Chair. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay, can you Chair. Take, yeah. Can you take your hands down and we move to 3.4. <coughs> Excuse me, Chair, can I ask what, what is the quarter for a joint sorry, meeting? Sorry, Chair. I trouble from my hand up. It didn't want to come back uh, down then. Hold on, comes to Goff. Hold on, comes to Goff. Comes to Adams has made a valid point about what is the quorum for a, a joint scrutiny meeting. Um, 25%. 25%. Thank you, comes to Davis. Comes to Goff. Thank you, Chair. Well, unless Kath wants to come in quickly. Kath, are you, um, do you want to come in quickly, your hands raised? Yeah, yeah, it would be eight members in that instance because there should have been 29 members here today and right. we have 16, so as long as we've got eight, we're quorum. Okay, thank you very much. Answer your question, Councillor Adams. Yes, yeah, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Kath. Councillor Goff, 3.4. <laughs> thanks, Chair. <laughs> if we can, then 3.4, uh, we recommend the Committee County Borough of a local business reduced uh, rate charge car parking charges permits for their staff uh, in certain car parks and it's encouraging people who work in the town centres to park further out. I mean, when we've got this current free parking, we've got complaints of businesses that the car, the car parks nearest the town centres are being filled by people who actually work in the towns. So what this recommendation is, is to offer incentives to companies to purchase um, permits to allow their staff to park in car parks on the periphery of towns at a reduced rate. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Mr Campbell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to remind members, we already do operate uh, a permit season ticket uh, system for which many businesses do uh, utilise. Uh, and it already offers quite a substantial discount on the already relatively low tariffs when you compare us with uh, neighbouring authorities. Uh, as the report says, depending on the length of your um, the, the ticket, the season ticket you have, which can be anything from a week to a year, uh, the saving could be between 25 and actually it's over 60 percent uh, for that period. Thank you, Mr Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Are we all clear on that, members? Um, so again, is, is if anybody's got any questions, for Mr. Campbell, I'd, I, I'd welcome them, but I can't see any hands up. Yeah. Um, yes. Marcus Chair, always wants to come in and then Mr. Davis. Marcus. Come in afterwards. Yes, certainly, Jim. Yes, certainly, Jim. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to remind members as well that there are officer uh, comments with regards to. Um, each of the re well, the recommendations, the financial implications are in section 10, um, but also in section 12 in the consultations, there are select comments from officers with regards to certain of the recommendations. And recommendation 3.4, um, with the existing um, uh, offers that we give for discounts ranging from 25 to 60 percent, we think is already um, generous. And therefore, we do not, um, as officers, support this recommendation to offer anything further over and above the 25 to 60 percent reduction we already offer. Thank you, Mr. Thank Lloyd. Uh, Councillor Davis and Councillor Gale. Uh, well, I move, Mr. Chairman, that we do not accept this recommendation because there is a payment system already in place. And, uh, 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Davis. I'll, I'll, I'll skip this a second and I'll let Councillor Gail come in first. Councillor Gail. Yes, well, there's more observation than the uh, question, Chair. Um, I've noticed when I've gone into Caerphilly and want to park there, um, all the car park spaces have gone. Uh, I put it down to people who are working in Caerphilly taking advantage of the free car parking, which stops the shoppers then uh, parking there. Thank you, Councillor Gail. Uh, do I have a second at the Councillor Davis' uh, amendment? Yeah, I'll second that, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Hussey. Uh, Councillor Adams, you got your hand raised? I was going to second uh, Councillor Davis there and, uh, of course, remind us that uh, the current uh, imbalance in the situation with full car parks uh, earlier in the daytime is because of the current situation. And I'm sure that when car parking is reimposed, uh, charging reimposed, then it will get go back to how it was pretty much be, before. Um, and 3.4 pretty much says how we currently manage and will in the future. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, Kath, do we put this in a different box to vote on now, or do we vote on Councillor Davis's motion first? I mean, what you could do, Chair, is is because you've had a move and a second for 3.4 to not support. Do you want to broadly see if there's a support for that? Um, and then if there's a majority who support not supporting that one, we can put that into a, a different vote um, at the end. Thank you. Are we all clear on that, mem members? What we're asking for now is a rip by re raising the hand to show uh, support for Co Councillor Davis's motion seconded by Councillor Adrian Hussey. So if you could raise your hands if you in support of that, please do. There are 10 members present who are in support of that motion. So as a majority, it don't broadly support that recommendation. Yes, thank you, Kath. you all to put your hands down now, and I'll ask Councillor Goff to start to 3.5. Okay, thanks, Chair. Yeah, 3.5, and it doesn't apply to a lot of car parks. I think across the borough, it may be two or three, and it's uh, where there are car parks in close proximity to schools, they're having parking issues during the school drop-off and pick-up times. Officers have given discretion to allow a free parking concession to parents and carers for a limited time only uh, and in consult consultation with the local ward members. So if the local ward members identify a school that's got a particular problem during pick-up and drop-off times that is near uh, a council car park where the charge is levied, the officers can use their discretion whether they charge for an half or an hour period or whatever the time is to allow parents to drop off and pick up their children and carers. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Uh, Mr Lloyd and Mr Campbell, uh, reading the report, I understand there's broad consensus from the officers in support of this. I believe so, Chair, that is the case. Just effectively to maintain um, or to extend the current uh, situation, it's, it's mostly focused in uh, Gaffilly Town at the moment, it's the Crescent Road car park, but uh, Libanus Road in Blackwood's uh, an issue as well. Um, but we want to be able to have that, the support to um, have show that discretion anywhere across the county borough should we, uh, any other issues arise. OK, thank you, Mr Campbell. Uh, Councillor Mike Adams, Sandra Grace first. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And pretty much in line with uh, Mr. Campbell's uh, uh, words then. Um, one of the problems that we do have is the length of time, how much earlier than pickup time in particular uh, for schools, some of the parents will park. And right. it's easily witnessed by most of us, I think, that it can be up to 45 minutes easily before the children come out. Uh, and that could be causing problems for other motorists. So uh, we, we really need to be very careful how much extra time we give people to just park there and stay without paying. Uh, so I, I know there's competition for the place, the few places in these kind of car parks. So we need to be careful about this. 
I, I, I dearly note that, Councillor Adams. Councillor Cushing. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just a bit of clarification, really. How are you going to identify that um, that it, those parked there are um, parents or carers picking up or dropping off children? Or are you just going to not enforce any sort of parking issues between certain times in the morning when that school starts and certain times in the afternoon when that school uh, breaks up? Uh, Marcus Lloyd is uh, uh, raised his hand to answer you. Uh, come to the question, Marcus. Thank you, Chair. It's just coming back on the, the points raised for there. I think the discretion we would be looking for is that we wouldn't carry out any enforcement in those car parks. They're very few and far between. There's not many of them for, say, 15 minutes before school start or school finish time. So 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after to give the parents a chance to park, walk to school, collect their child and walk back to the car. So we think 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after is a reasonable time if members are in an agreement. Thank you, Mr Lloyd. I can't see any other hands up, so can we have an indication of broad support for our recommendation, please? Using a hands up. Is there anybody who hasn't been able to vote? Yes, I am voted, Chair. And, and which way would you like to vote, Councillor Gale? In support of the recommendation? Support it. Thank you very much, Councillor Gail. There we are. That's another one that can be added. Thank you very much indeed. I'll ask you all to put your hands down now. Councillor Goff, uh, it's 3.6. Thanks, Chair. Uh, the recommendation for the task and finish group is to remove the Sunday car parking charges at the Toyn car park. Uh, this has been uh, an historical arrangement that is no longer required and, and will provide parity. asking the officers come to Davis. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to uh, align at this recommendation up to 3.8, sorry, um, 3.9, where we are looking at the fact of considering the charges on the car park and be deferred because of the, the coronavirus virus. And I think this will come into that when we do come back to discuss it because it's, you know, as far if it's free parking, fair enough. If it's not, it's got to be taken into account. I think that's a good point. Comes I don't think we can isolate one, uh, you know, one area until we know exactly where we go in after the virus is over on policy of free parking. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Goff, are you happy to amalgamate 3.6 and 3.9? I can do, Chair. I think the reason it was brought up is that the Toyn car park, because of its close proximity to the castle, uh, was free up until, and Clive might correct me or Marcus, it was free up until, uh, until a couple of years ago, and then charges were implemented on the Sunday. And that was all, but I'm happy that, as uh, Councillor Davis suggests, that we deal with their own block at the two at the same time, once we know where we're going with the virus. So, so in, in, in essence, we'd be deferring it until after the uh, current emergency is over, yeah? Can we take? Can, can we can we also take that in that three point nine as a joint? Yes. Recommendation, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I will move that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, but I'll, I'll ask for officer comments first, Councillor Davis. All right. I thought you had. Yeah. Officers, have you got to make any comments? Chair, uh, if the matter is going to be deferred, no, no I, I wouldn't comment at this time. Um, okay, okay. That, that's fine. Just, that's... just to note that it's the only car park uh, where there's Sunday charging. Okay, thank and you very much. Mr. In terms Campbell. of how long it's been there, uh, it's been many, many years. I, I don't, can't remember exactly when it uh, came into being, but it's been many, many years. Okay, then. So, uh, Councillor Davis has proposed a motion which is uh, comes with Councillor Goff's consent that 3.6 and 3.9 be amalgamated and be deferred until after the emergency is over. Uh, can I ask members then for to raise their hand to say if they, they in favour of that? Overwhelming support. Uh, has anybody not been able to vote using the hands function? No, I haven't voted. Uh, can I ask you then, Councillor Gale, what, what your um, view is? It? Are you in favour of merging 3.6 and 3.9 yeah. until Andrew until after the emergency? Yes, I know. Thank you, Councillor Gale. 
Okay then, uh, if you can make a note of that, please, Kath. Um, can you all take your hands down now, please? Uh, and back to you then, uh, Councillor Goss, 3.7. Thank you, Chair. Um, there was a recommendation from the Cabinet that all car parks within the county borough uh, are free on St David's Day. There will be no charges levied for the 1st of March in any of the Council's car parks. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Um, that's an interesting one indeed. Um, officers, have you got any comments? Um, uh, Chair, only to uh, draw your attention again to the financial impact um, that's, that's uh, identified in the report. Um, which is relatively small, two to three thousand pounds a year. Uh, and from a, a practical point of view, if this were to be supported, um, we wouldn't look to amend any signage. Um, well, no, we probably wouldn't look to amend any signage or, or the paint display machines. It would be through uh, promoting through the council's existing uh, public channels. Uh, media channels and just simply by bagging the paint display machines because the day varies from year to year. Yeah, obviously, obviously, Mr. Campbell, thanks very much. I got uh, Councillor Kirby first, then Councillor uh, Davis. Uh, Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Chair. I'd oppose this proposal. Um, I think if and when Welsh Government introduces a national holiday on St David's Day, I think this would be a good idea, but until they do, I don't think it's worthwhile and I would oppose it. Thank you, Councillor Kirby. Have we got a second for that, please? Hi, Shag, I'm a chairman. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Davis, you've got your hand raised. Councillor Davis, too there, you've got your hand raised. Oh yes, I. Can I say that um, I think this comes under the policy we just agreed to refer it, as far as I can see, until the issue was sorted out after the um, virus issue. I mean, we can't do much about it. But next next March and St David's Day is, you know, it's a long way off. They've got plenty of time for another year after for this to be considered. So that's why I oppose it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Tom Williams. Tom, you have your hand raised. He's muted and. Yeah, uh, Tom, you muted. I, I can't see his picture on the screen. Tom, you're on mute. Hand's gone down now. Um, so therefore, I think it's if it comes to Kirby and comes to Davis, could take their hands down as well for my clarity. Um, my so apologies, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sorry, comes to Davis. That's fine. Um. Again, this is a matter which is felt that we should defer this until after the pre present emergency is over. If you're all in favour of that, can you roughly show your hands, please? Uh, quickly show your hands, please. Yes, that's got a majority support there. And uh, Councillor Gale, how would you how would you like to vote? In favour. Thank you. So if you can make a note of that then, please, Kath. Um, I would you go back to you again, Rob? Three point eight. Right, three count, Chair. Thanks a lot. The Task and Finish re recommends to Scrutiny Committee that they ask the Cabinet to review their position on not charging for car parking in park and rides. Uh, the, the, I don't know if people are aware, but the council pays business rates on its car parks. Park and rides are the highest maintenance for keeping clean CCTV cameras, and yet the country is levied and people parking in park and rides predominantly are going to work in Cardiff, where for those people who go into Cardiff will find it's not a and uh, usual to pay eight or eleven pounds for three or four hours. So there's an opportunity there of generating some income to improve or be offset against some of the other recommendations. 
They've got some hands up, but obviously, having read the report, I'm sure I think the op- uh, opposites have a different opinion. Is that correct, then, Campbell? If I can come in on one, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, yes, the, like. the experiences we've had previously, before we've had parking rides in certain places, um, yes. Pengam is a, a prime example where there was significant issues with uh, parking in the side streets. Although, um, as Councillor Goff said, it would be much needed income into the service area. Um, I think it would create a lot of problems with um, cars decanting from the, the parking rides to possibly into side streets, which would then cause us a, a problem with residents not being able to park outside their properties and the, the resultant um, fallout from that. So it's uh, it's a bit of a two-edged sword, this one. Yes, we would welcome the income, but I think the, the problems that would result if we started charging in parking rides from people parking in side streets may be a major issue. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, comes to Kirby. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I support Mr Lloyd's arguments, but I also support the uh, manifesto commitment that this council's administration made in 2017, which is to maintain free park and ride facilities, and so clearly I will oppose this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Kirby. Councillor Davis? Yes, Mr uh, Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm totally against this. I mean, I recall when I was a cabinet member from 2004 to 2008, and I think Bob, prior to that, knew the problems in Pengam, for example, where the horrendous problems of parking with the residents. I went to, I forget how many meetings I went to, to meet the public down there, but it's horrendous. They couldn't park anywhere near their houses. And as far as I'm concerned, this is totally unacceptable. And that's the reason why we put in park and ride down in Pengam. And don't forget, Pengam was attraction from people coming from Kim Forest, Blackwood even, to travel down because obviously there's no train service from Blackwood. If you do this, when we brought the park and ride into Bargood, it alleviated a lot of illegal parking in the side streets and it's proved itself. And if we go back again to put a, a charge on this, then I can see without any doubt, these drivers who want to go by train to wherever they are, are going back into the side streets to park. Oh As Mark has said, it's not worth the money because we st- we have so much uh, problems coming from it, from the public, and quite rightly so. Uh, and I know there's been a different opinion on this, uh, as Bob knows. But at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, if I, I think it was recommended one pound fifty, I think uh, in that in those days to put a charge on. So I'm t- totally opposed to doing this, Mr. Chairman. As far as I'm concerned, it should be left free. Uh, Councillor Davis, do I accept it? Then you you, you, you put, put the second Councillor Kirby's motion. I will second it hundred percent. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Davis. There's a few other hands raised. So I've got this. Uh, Councillor Cushing. Hi, thanks, uh, Chair. Yeah, I actually um, agree with Councillor Davis and Councillor uh, Kirby. Totally um, object to this uh, item. Um, I actually go as far as to say to have that actually removed from the recommendations. Because, um, as uh, Mr. Lloyd said, it will call, cause untold um, issues regarding parking in residential areas. Um, I know the one in Hengoid, uh, you know, they would be all parking e- absolutely everywhere around there rather than pay the fee. Additionally, most of those commuters, they have to pay a high price for their train fares to get into Cardiff. And to have that on top, they may be thinking, well, I may as well just take my car with me and park it uh, near a Cardiff. Um, you know, so you're talking the environmental impact as well. So I would actually recommend that we take that recommendation out of the report. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cushing. Before I go to the next uh, elected member, Clive Campbell has his hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just wanted to uh, add some more context for members to consider. Um, to, in addition to the comments Mr Lloyd has made. Uh, just to remind members that um, in recent years there's been substantial investment across the borough uh, in park and rides and they have proved very successful in their main purpose which was to uh, encourage a more sustainable tra- travel and the shift to uh, to, to, the, to rail services. Um, We've still got a few aspirations for additional park and rides or extensions to park and rides uh, in the county borough. 
and if we were to introduce uh, charges that could adversely impact the viability of those schemes going forward and um, how they might be considered by Welsh Government who, who are the main funding body for these. Thanks. Thank you Mr Campbell. Councillor Gay. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to uh, agree with everything that's been said uh, previously. Uh, Pengam Station is in my ward and I would be totally against um, having parking charges there. I'm well aware of all the congestion in the side streets and it would be just me so much worse. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gay. Councillor Williams. Walter Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I support this scheme, but uh, I remember in some meetings or a year or so ago, we were talking about uh, if you buy a ticket in a park and ride, that price of that ticket would be taken off the train fare from the station to Cardiff. So actually, you wouldn't be paying anyway. No, that's, I, I support anyway, but that's what I remember from other meetings. Thank you. Thank you, come to uh, Williams. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, did, have we got a comment on that? Where was, have we ever considered that? Um, I think Mr. Campbell will probably come in and pro um, provide a bit more clarity on that. They, they have been <coughs> suggestions in the past of looking at these as options to try and encourage more sustainable transport um, with people using the public transport systems. Uh, is there was never any real decisions made on it, but they were suggestions that were could possibly be looked at to encourage more people to use um, the, the trains and the buses, etc., instead of using their own cars. Um, because obviously there were prior to the the pandemic lots of vehicles, single occupancy, travelling in and out of Cardiff. Um, and they were things that uh, were looked at at, um, at that time. We're in a totally different world now, um, and we don't know what post-COVID world is going to look like. Uh, I think we need to probably understand what that is, um, which will take some time for it to settle down because lots of businesses are now considering um, a more flexible, agile working pattern uh, with more people working from home. So uh, there isn't anything at the moment, but I, I don't think we could really give any comment on that until we see what the travel patterns are going forward. But as you all are aware, there's a significant investment coming into the, the Metro um, and uh, we're at the forefront of that. And uh, we want to try and encourage as many people to utilize the public transport going forward. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Um, I can't see any other hands up. So if we take then Councillor Kirby's uh, motion that we remove this, uh, that we do not support this recommendation, which was seconded by Councillor Davis, can I have, roughly have a show of hands to say well, it was in favour of that? I think that's pretty much unanimous. Uh, there's a majority for it. Uh, Councillor Gail, how would you vote? Four, then, please. Four. Right, in in favour. Thank you, Councillor Gail. Uh, thank you, Kath. Can you record that one? Uh, 3.9 we've already dealt with, uh, Councillor Goff. Um, can you want to 3.10, please? And can you put your hands down, please, members? Thanks, if I can. <clears throat> 3.10 um, really is... is uh, recommendation from the task and finish group because of the way that residents parking sorry parking in town centers in side streets is virtually abused because uh, as most people are aware you're allowed to park in philly town bargoy blackwood and various places for an hour or whatever it's there to encourage people to do the shop in park and go but um it was brought to the attention of the task and finish group that there are people we're a bit shrewd and we'll park somewhere for a, for their, their hour and then go and move their car to a different street. And suggesting the zone uh, was that you do blocks of streets as a zone, which would then not allow these people to move because they would still be ta taking uh, a parking space in the same zone. It sounds complicated. 
But the whole idea is, if you have an idea, you can park in Caffelli in Bradford Street. When your time is up, you can move it to White Street and, and park again. And that's what's happening by people working in the town. So the recommendation is saying, if you park in those streets, uh, so everything east, sorry, west of Cardiff Road would be zone A, everything to the east of West would be zone B, so you couldn't actually park in the same zone. So whether Clive's got a different view on that to arrive, but that's the way I read the recommendation. It's there to stop people abusing free parking in, in, in town centres. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Mr Campbell on Mr Lloyd, have you got a comment? Uh, Chair, if I take this one, um, there are two sort of intertwined issues here. Uh, one is the residence permit parking scheme, and then one is the, the other is how on-street parking is restricted for non-residents, typically through limited waiting. Uh, and where you, were, where you were looking in particular at um, side streets around uh, busy retail areas, that's, that's often, or, or large um, employment sites, that's often where the tensions lie. Um, to, in some respects, this issue has already been identified uh, by members and, and recognised uh, by previous scrutiny committees. So when we issue when we brought the first update report on civil parking enforcement, I think it was in 2018, um, sorry, 2019, beg your pardon, um, members discussed and agreed a priority for looking at reviewing traffic regulation orders. So the first phase was to look at uh, a county-wide approach to restrictions that can easily be taken out that weren't particularly contentious. The second phase was to look at where additional restrictions could be put in, um, largely on contentious on a county-wide basis. And then the third phase was to look at uh, resident permit parking. And so it's in our program, um, although a timeline hasn't yet been identified, and th these issues need to be looked at on a an area by area basis because you need to look at the local circumstances to see what is appropriate in terms of balancing the needs of residents, uh, workers and visitors, visitors to the town, visitors to residents. So it's it's an issue that you need to look at on a site by site basis, have that discussion with members before we can agree a, a package of proposals to put to the wider public for consultation. So it's not an easy one to deal with uh, globally, but it can, but it's something that certainly can we have the powers to do and, and the ability to do. It's just and it's already to some respect in our work program. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Councillor Hazzy. Thank you, Chair. I was wondering if I could move a motion uh, that this report um, comes back to, uh, to scrutiny. Um, I've got a few issues in my own ward, and I know that um, Councillor Davis have been um, in Bargoid about the uh, time limit on, on parking. Newport, um, their streets near the, the town centre are uh, 8 till 8 and permit, only, permit owners only where we are charging our residents who are unfortunately live near the, the, the town centres to park, to be able to park in their streets. So I think that if we could bring um, a report on this uh, at a later date, um, I think that would be the best way forward because this is, the street parking isn't really anything to do with car parking as such. Hello Chair, sorry and that we were tasked with looking at all car parking when the task and finish group was set up but if you look to um, was it the next one which is 311 that then includes the permit parking for residents so this is about the current parking system being abused which our officers are going to look at anyway and then 311 would I think cover what you were looking to do on residence permit parking and, and the preference given to residents to park in, 
in near town centres. Uh, Councillor, yeah. if I if I may, may I ask you a question before I go to Councillor Adams? I just his name. I, I, would it be uh, beneficial then if we merge 3.9 and 3.10 together? Uh, sorry, 3.10 and 3.11 together, and have a request for that to come back scrutiny as a separate report. Yeah, that'll be fine, Chair. And 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 that's the motion you want to put. Yeah, I would. Yeah. 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 Have we got a seconder for that motion? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Davis has seconded. Councillor Adams. I, again, I would have seconded that. Uh, suggested you just made because I think 3.10 goes an awful long way to what Cam uh, Clive Campbell has told us anyway that it uh, it seems to be already taking a bit of a priority within this uh, this sector of uh, of the whole report so very happy to uh, to uh, look at that uh, overlap being joined up for a future report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Uh Councillor Davis, oh, do you, do you have yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I fully support, and you're quite right, uh, uh, Bart, Rob, that we, you know, <coughs> sorry about this call, like, you know, that as far as I'm concerned, the issue of um, permit parking needs to be looked at very seriously because what we are getting, we got, we've got households who are having a contract with this authority. Fifteen pound for a permit, or if it's thirty pound for two, to have the right to park in their street. There's two issues I'm concerned about. In fact, I got a case going on now in Bargwood of a street right near the town centre. First, first of all, we put signs in for limited parking for thirty minutes or whatever it is in a permit reservation permit street, and it has annoyed them. They can come any time and park in the street and not pay a penny and depriving them of parking within their street with their permits. The other one is enforcement because I've had a case a day. In one street, people are paying their permit, others are not, but they still park in there. I was also told there's one house got four cars, haven't got any permits and they park in there. So as far as I'm concerned, this needs to be looked really seriously because when we make a contract with a person, a resident, of a permit for parking, then they should have the right to do it. We've got enough problems anyway, because as you know, in a lot of streets, we haven't got enough room for the number of cars compared to the houses. And there's a problem there as well, but that's something else. And as you know, within a range of streets within the permit system, they can park anywhere in the next street if they got a permit. So I would I would second that. Well, I would support that that we have a, urgently a report on this to resolve that. And as I as um, Adrian said, the biggest other problem is the eight till six, Monday to Saturday, where people come home from work or come from shopping after six o'clock, and everyone else can park in that street, and they can't park. And as I think in Newport, they in some of them. Remind me uh, at the end of the day, um, Mr. Campbell, that in some councils they have got later times for the permits, eight o'clock or nine o'clock in other authorities. And I think that's important that could be looked at as well to ensure that the guarantee for people who got permits can park as late as that. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Cam ah, sorry, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just wanted to respond to a, a couple of points uh, that Councillor Davis has made. Uh, I'll take the, the last one first, actually. Um, certainly, we're, we now have the ability to effectively review how the policy is applied countywide because we've got the, uh, the enforcement responsibility and we have the officers that we can deploy in, in a shift pattern that's, that suits uh, suits the council. Uh, so so that's certainly something that can be considered in the future. I just more, uh, the reason why I put my hand up uh, firstly was to respond to the, the point about um, people parking in residence permit parkets now. Just wanted to remind you that under COVID, when the council offices were closed, um, residents weren't able to renew their uh, permits. So effectively, we suspended enforcement in resident permit parking bays. And it is only uh, last month yeah. that 
we have sent letters to residents to remind them to renew their permits. So we're working through that now um, by phone, online, to help support uh, residents to make those payments and renew their permits. And it will be in the next two weeks or so, probably after Christmas, I think it, it, the letters state, where we will um, on the start undertake an enforcement in those areas again. So you should see an improvement on that uh, specific point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Uh, Councillor Davis, do you want to come back? No, I made my point and I, I think uh, Mr. Campbell has cleared his point. I, I'm glad that, that that's going to come up more enforcement because that's important to those permit holders. We've got a contract Thanks. with us. Yes, exactly. Well, OK, then what we've got is a, a suggestion by C Councillor Hussey, seconded by Councillor Davis, that we amalgamate 3.9 and 3.10 and do not do not recommend them, but ask it to come back to Scrutiny Committee as a separate report. Uh, could you indicate your support for that uh, by showing hands, please? Sorry, okay, can I just say it was 310 and 311. Yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the light is going in the room. It's 310 and 311. Th thank you, Kat. Thank you, Robert, for reminding me. Uh, can you raise your hands and show your support, please? <laughs> yep, that's a majority. Fine, thank you very much. Uh, you put your hands down. Um, just before the meeting started, there was a... a Councillor Hussey, you're going to uh, move that we actually take 3.12 out of the report because that's already happened? Yes, Chair, just for, for the record. Yeah. 3.12 is removed. Okay? Uh, is that okay, Councillor Goff? Yeah, fine. Uh, do, Kat, do I need to ask for a show of hands for that? Yes, yes please, Chair. Yes, thank, thank you. Uh, all those in favour, please indicate and show your hands. Again, a clear majority. Councillor Gale, which which way do you want to vote? Oh, please. Thank oh. you, Councillor Gale. OK, thank you very much. Uh, put your hands down now and speedily, Councillor Goff, we move on to item 3.13. <laughs> right. I, I wonder what I've been doing the last 12 months to, to warrant this. <laughs> Tudor, this is... The, the MBE, um, possibly. <laughs> right, 3.13, the, the current approach, the, the um, task and finish group uh, picked up on the issue of where the council currently allows trading to take place in certain of its car parks. Uh, the one given as an example is in Rumley that a butcher's vehicle operates out of a car park or used to operate out of a car park there. But it's allowing officers to have the discretion to permit this kind of activity in car parks across the border, there's no formal policy, so it's allowing the the officers to develop a policy where, you know, do down to their discretion, they could allow this activity to take place. Thank you, Councillor Goff, uh, Mr. Lloyd, or Mr. Campbell. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Just to uh, just to add, um, we have somewhat informally been applying this. Uh, for a number of years, but it would be uh, appreciated to have members' formal support on this. Um, our trading, strictly speaking, under the car parking order, trading is prohibited, but there are a few occasions where it is seen as a community benefit and we, we would like to, to continue with that discretion. Um, but other examples um, where we already allow, it's not trading, but, but use of the car park for other purposes, Will be things like a the breast cancer testing facility uh, or, or maybe even blood donation so so there are some genuine um genuine reasons why we want to have that flexibility thank you thank you mr campbell um councillor davis you have your hand raised no i'm sorry sir. no okay thanks very much um well if there's nobody else's hand we raised can we all give an indication of our support for that uh, recommendation by raising your hands please Councillor Gale. Um, oh. Thank you very much. There's an overwhelming majority for that. Thank you very much indeed. 
Um, back to you, Councillor Goff, 3.14. Thanks, Chair. Uh, the task of Finnish Group are asking that consideration should be given to cease the locking of the car parks at Thorncombe Thorn Thorn 3 on Wesley Road, Blackwood, during the night upon the retirement of the member of staff. Uh, if this decision is recommended, the areas will be monitored because in the past there's been issues related to um, antisocial behaviour, but the feeling from the officers is that currently there's been an improvement in the behaviour and activity in those car parks. However, if the decision is supported, the areas will be monitored and if needs be, um, provision can be made for those car, car parks to be locked again. Mr Chairman. That could come to Davis. My hand training is not working, I just can't come into you. Oh. Can I say, Mr Chairman, as far as I'm concerned, this is a, a, a local ward issue as far as I'm concerned. And this matter, as far as I'm concerned, should be deferred until such time that person, the key person, uh, gives, up the, gives up the job and the matter then for the officers and the members to sort it out. I, I, so I, therefore, I, I would move that um, we refer, you know, refer it to the appropriate time when he retires. Um, I hope he's not 30 years of age. <laughs> I, I, I think it's in the chair. Before I ask for a second, I, I, I would remind members um, that there is no fixed retirement age. In fact, in my last occupation, I had a member of staff who was 82 and the best fluid hydraulics engineer lecturer I've ever met. But there we are. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I think the retirement is imminent, Chair. That's why it was brought up. Well, as I sort it out when it comes. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, we've got a second that comes to the Davis's motion. Yeah, I'll sec second out, oh. Chair. When it comes to the Hussey, I've got a few hands up. Uh, Councillor Gay. And hand has dropped down. Uh, Councillor Diane Price. Oh, sorry, is my hand still up? Sorry. No, I'm all right. <laughs> Legacy hand, right. It's okay, Councillor Price. Uh, Councillor Bob away. Sorry, uh, I'm in trouble with the buttons here as well. Um, yeah, on this one, um, I've been contacted by uh, Blackwood Ward members just to mention uh, about this and I think uh, and Rob Goff was as well to do with this lock in of these gates because apparently currently at the Wesley Road Blackwood car park there is a lot of uh, antisocial behaviour going on and what they're basically saying is it definitely needs to be continued to be locked uh, and they've got police support for that. So I just wanted to make those points and make the, the people aware. Uh, I don't know how long um, the caretaker person has left, but um, it's certainly something that um, if if it was left open, it would continue to be some problems there, I believe. So it's just more but of a comment on behalf of Blackwood. Yeah. Bob Owen's comments Bob. there, there's, there's been no mention in the task and finish group, either from the police or from local members regarding that those issues. So I don't know if Clive's got information on the current situation there. Uh, I'll ask Mr Campbell to come in now, but uh, I, I think Councillor Holm is making the point that he's been asked to, asked to face that, that, that information before us. Uh, Mr Campbell. Uh, thanks again, Chair. Uh, certainly that hasn't uh, that request hasn't been uh, uh, sent to us directly. Um, the the, the the arrangement has been a long-standing one. Um, the officer in question could leave any time. He hasn't given us a date, but uh, we're sort of anticipating that it, it could be in the near future. But uh, I'm quite happy to deal with this as a local matter in discussion with the ward members. Thank you, Mr Campbell. Councillor Walter Chair. Williams. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I think this may have been a legacy of the problems we used to have in Blackwood Town Centre, where teenagers racing up and down in cars, then they decided to shut the centre, the town centre off, and it stopped all that. And um, I think we would have a problem straight away. If we opened the car park at night, you'd have teenagers, gangs in there, drinking, smoking, whatever, 
and uh, we'd have a lot of problems with litter the following morning because I have the same problem in my ward where we have to lock the car park by the school, by the community centre because the residents have complained about antisocial behaviour two o'clock in the morning. You know, and this is something that's going to happen again, I think. I mean, we must, although this chap might retire, is he the only one going around locking things? I mean, the cemeteries are locked at night. Someone has to travel and do that. So it's just a matter of uh, deferring the, the, the job, perhaps, to someone else. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, Councillor Mike Adams. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it seems as if the request that uh, the way that Bob uh, Owen put it to us from Blackwood members is in uh, a bit, uh, I've seen, they want it kept locked and the consideration, consideration should be given to cease lock in the car parks and, and, and looking at when the current person who does the locking uh, is retired. Uh, so there seems to be a bit of uh, what if, what if, what if, yeah. why? Uh, it, 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 between local members and what the task and finish group. Uh, I, I don't know whether Councillor Goff can explain any more on that to us. Frank, come in, Mike. We, we were talking about the uh, car parks. Uh, there were Blackwood members present and we, we were given the impression that those car parks had historical issues with antisocial behaviour, but that appeared to have been resolved when they resolved yeah. the issues around Blackwood Town, as you say. That's right. Um, but then this last couple of days, Councillor Etheridge, uh, Councillor Farina Childs have sent emails out saying that they have concerns that there is um, still antisocial behaviour issues in the area. Now, the task and finish group could well have come to a different decision. And the police said that there were issues on site or being made aware that they were still antisocial behaviour issues on site. I think what's been suggested is that uh, officers work with local members and try and find a compromise of how that's going to work. Yep. Yes, Councillor. Yeah, I would agree with that. It hasn't. That kind Councilor of information Adams, hasn't Adams. percolated Councilor down Adams, through please. to the neighbouring ward. Councillor Adams, please. I think we debated this uh, enough, as a matter of fact, because yeah. we, the, the, the gentleman who does the locking up hasn't retired. And Councillor yeah, exactly. Davis and Councillor Hasley cl clearly made it that they think that we, this should be deferred for discussion yeah. with local ward members once the gentleman, if he retires at all, because you can't Quite right. force people to retire. So could I have an indication of members, therefore, whether they support Councillor Davis's recommendation and Councillor Hasley's recommendation that this is deferred until the gentleman actually retires? I'm getting quicker at counting these hands now, and uh, uh, this is an improvement. It's an education, Mr. Chair. Yes, indeed it is. Indeed it is, Chair. <laughs> Councillor June Gale, do you want to vote for or against the motion? Oh. Thank you very oh. much. Thank you, Kath, if you could record that and everybody put their hands down. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Goff, uh, 3.15. Yeah, we're getting there now, Chair. <laughs> uh, the task and finish group recommend to scrutiny that all surplus income generated from car parking charges should be ring fenced and uh, for maintenance and improvements to our car parking provision through a planned maintenance program, including improved directional signage and lighting. A lot of our car parks are not very welcome in, and when you consider uh, uh, no disrespect in sex, uh, having uh, sex discrimination level, it me is that there are a lot of lady drivers who are using our car parks at night, and they're not very well lit. When visitors are visiting our towns, they're not very well signposted. So that recommendation is to highlight those issues for improvement. Thank you, Councillor Goff. I'm sure Mr. Lloyd and Mr. Campbell have an opinion on this, and I. And welcome hearing that opinion. Uh, Chair, I draw, draw your uh, members' uh, attention to the officer comments on this. Um, it's it's some, somewhat difficult to get your head around. We've, we've identified um, some financial implications of ring fencing the budgets. Uh, 
the, the figures show uh, 270,000 pounds for the year based on actual income for, for last financial year, but also the the difference or shortfall against the budget. And it's the budget that is is the particularly important one here. Uh, from a corporate financial accounting perspective, it's the, the difference against the budget that service areas have to um, uh, account for. Um, and if the budget is ring fenced to just the car parts alone, then it takes out uh, a significant proportion of budget that would ordinarily be available for other services across the service area, highways, transportation, engineering. And while there is an issue to deal with some elements of uh, renewal or repair, uh, replacement for car parks, ring fencing it solely to, to, to car parks would be yeah. an inefficient way of managing that budget because often those issues don't crop up from one year to the next, whereas the use of the budget as it is used now is used each year to support a variety of uh, services and functions. Uh, so this is one that officers uh, uh, wouldn't support, um, but do recognise that there is a, a need to address those one-off ad hoc costs um, as and when they arise. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. I believe Mr. Lloyd is coming as well. I'm, I'm, I'm back live now. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Marcus. Thank you, Chair. Just to support what um, Mr. Campbell was saying there, that uh, there are pri high priorities elsewhere within the infrastructure division for lots of other works that we do, um, and to ring fence this solely to, to car parks could deprive us doing emergency. Um, drainage jobs, highway jobs, and just to put it in simplistic terms, if I only had enough money to do one pot all, and I've got a pot all in a car park and a pot all on a dual carriageway in a 70 mile an hour road, which which pot all would you do first? So it would be that bypass that would take the priority. So that's what we've got to bear in mind with the budget. Car parks that are in there, we'd have maintenance regimes in place, but obviously we need to balance that up against all of the other highway priorities that we've got, and there are many. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, Councillor Davis, DT. Well, I move that we do not accept this recommendation, Mr. Chairman, because of the very reasons that Marcus, is yes, Marcus Lloyd just said. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Do we have a second there? Yeah, I'll second, I'll that. second that. Councillor Adams on this occasion yeah. was, was first to the draw. Um, and also, uh, just to add to that, uh, Chair, of course, um, if we were looking forward to ring fencing, the surplus income, we'd be lost for a couple of years now, unfortunately, because there hasn't been hardly any income, is there, no. for this year? Thanks. I'll take it, Councillor Adams. OK, then, so by show of hands, can you uh, indicate whether you were supportive of Councillor Davis's motion and seconded by Councillor Adams? Was majority. Councillor Gale, are you for or against? Oh. Let's see this broad majority. Uh, thank you, members. Could you record that, please, Kath? And um, oh, back to you, Rob. Um, three point one six. Last, last one, Chair. And it's uh, the opportunities to improve the existing CCTV uh, be explored where grant funding or possible match funding can be found to be available. Um, some of our car parks have got CCTV cameras, some haven't. In some areas, the cameras are a bit dated and the quality of the reproduction is not that good. So if there is an opportunity for identifying either match funding or grants, then we should take every opportunity to obtain that money. Yeah. Uh, either the officers want to make a comment on that. I've got Councillor Davis's hand is raised and Mark Lloyd's hand is raised. Apologies, Chair. Mine was a legacy hand, but I, I will come in on it. Um, yeah, from an officer point of view, anything we can do with regards to grant funding, we would um, follow up and try and maximise that to, to make improvements where, where possible. I move, I move, I move Mr Chairman. 
Thank you, Councillor Davies. We got a second there before I bring you. Yes, yeah, so I'll I'll second yeah. before Adrian gets in front of me again. Right. Uh, okay, Councillor Cushing. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, I, I would actually totally agree with upgrading and improving existing CCTV because I have it on good authority that the CCTV that, um, well, some of the CCTV within the uh, Caffili County Borough Council area is very um, grainy. You couldn't really identify people on it um, or whatever has been. It's mm -hmm. not a very good system. Hence, that's why they have to have the lights on at T Penalta. Um, so I would totally support this. Thank you, Councillor Cushing. Councillor Walter Williams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, with the regards to grant funding, um, couldn't we bring 3.15 in on it? Because if you're going to improve the cameras, you need better lighting. So then we could improve the lighting under with any grant funding that comes in. Can I say something I'll back on that one, if you don't mind? Go on then, come to question. Yeah, I've got CCTV around my house and where the lights go off, as you know, we've, uh, under this new regime now, where the lights go off at a certain time, and mine are called, what they're called daylight cameras. So you can actually still see a lot, What and it's not infrared or anything like that. They're called daylight cameras and it's absolutely brilliant because even though it's pitch black out there, I can still see what's uh, going on around my property. Thank you, Councillor. Question for that piece of information, but we've got a motion that's been put by Councillor Davis. Um, we've got a second if it comes to Adams. Can I, because it is look, asking us to look at all opportunities for grant funding. Uh, so by show of hands, could you indicate your support for that, please? Councillor Gale, for or against? No. Thank you, Councillor Gale. Clear majority. Um, Thank you very much, members, but that's not the end of the voting. Um, Thanks, Chair. I appreciate that. That's the hard bit then. I'll leave the easy bit to Cass now. <laughs> I was about to say that I think, I think the, uh, the easy bit is now <laughs> definitely down to Cass. Whether I describe it as easy or not, Councillor Goff, I don't think it is. Um, I've got, got some Chair, hands just ask, um, Chairman, Councillor Goff, don't, don't resign as a chairman now, will you? <laughs> Retiring, you? I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've got, a few hands, I've got a few hands up there, so I, 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 but I don't know what they're referring to. Councillor Mark Evans? Sorry, you have to up, Chair. Okay, uh, Councillor Ron Gay, is it a legacy hand? Uh, sorry. Yes, it's okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, could I ask, yeah. no, could you now ask Kath to go through the, lost, uh, the list and see where we are? Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, uh, come to Jane, I, got a, I got a quick so, question, if I may. I think, uh, come on in, uh, Councillor Hussey. Yeah, um, I know uh, this ain't going to come into force till um, till the end of March, but I was wondering if Mark, I saw Mr Williams uh, could comment on the, uh, the age of the, the parking machines, that um, you've got to have the right change um, to put in there. And not a lot of people actually carry change in their pockets. Now, I know I don't. I'm more of a contactless person. So I was just wondering, is there any plans to um, upgrade the, the parking meters in the car parks? Uh, Mark thank S. Williams has his hand raised, Mark. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, yes, Councillor Hussey, you are absolutely correct. Our parking or P&D machines, as we call them, pay and display machines, are... Uh, somewhat old and a little bit decrepit, coming to the end of their useful life. Because of their age, they do require correct change only. Um, and if you use P&D machines in a modern city centre these days, you can pay with your phone, with a card, with cash, with a variety of, of methods. So it would be our plan, um, obviously, once the free period comes to an end, to upgrade our par uh, pay and display machines. Um, I appreciate... Uh, so your question is quite timely, Councillor Hussey. Thanks for that. Appreciate that it's not necessarily one of the recommendations of the task and finish group, but if members tonight are happy to add it to the suite of recommendations that will go before Cabinet, that you know we we replace our pay and display machines in our car parks for a, for a more modern offer. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Mark. 
Yeah, thank like you, Chair. Shall we do refer it to the Cabinet for their consideration? Right, OK, that's it. You'd Adrian second that. And Councillor Gay, you've got your hand raised? Yeah, I just wondered if that would um, also, uh, as you do in car different things, you pay for the parking when you get back so you know in advance so you don't get caught out by paying, you know, an hour and, and overrunning by 10 minutes. A consideration I'm sure they'll be taken forward by the officers, Councillor Gay. Um, I, I, obviously, I'm going to have to ask for a show of hands to see whether there's broad support for that um, recommendation brought forward by Councillor Hussey. Um, hands are already going up at the rate of knots. Yeah. Councillor, Councillor Gay, are you in, in favour or, or against? For or against? For. Thank you, Councillor. If you can all take your hands down now, I'll I'll now go back to Kath Bob Thompson and she can give us uh, some uh, advice on where we should be and how, how we're going to vote on this process going forward. Thank you, Chair. I've been keeping close notes of what everyone wants. So if the first vote we're going to do on phones, which is in the chat facility, it's for the recommendations that you want to support. So these are the ones in the report, plus the additional one I call 3.17 to replace play and display machines for a more modern offer. So the ones that you've agreed to support is 3.2, 3.3, and the additional 3.17 for the play and display machines. Now, these have all been individually moved and seconded. So can we have somebody to move and second those on block, please? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll move on block. I'll move on block, Chair. And I'll second that, Chair. Move on block, and Councillor Hussey seconded. OK, now if members are able to go to the chat function, which is at the top of your screen, next to the two little people, there's a, there's a chat box. So if you open that up, there'll be a voting option there. For those who can't, if you can verbally say that you can't vote. And voting has started now. Councillor Gay, your hand is raised. Yeah, that's uh, I'm I'm using that as voting for. Thank you. Comes the Gale, uh, for or against? For. Would the ones that we've got in, Kat, Kat, I think that's a majority. Yes. That's correct, Chair. That's a majority. And then we know what the next one, which I suggest might be a little more complicated one. I'm going to have to listen yeah. to the next one. <laughs> right, thank you. I'll move on to the ones now that the group did not support. So these are 3.4, 3.8 and 3.15. If you just give Emma a second for her to put the vote up. They're now showing in chat if members want to vote. And for clarity, uh, Kath, for the members, if you're voting yes, you're voting not to support. That's correct. Case. Supporting the, the, the movement not to support the recommendation. Oh, bloody hell. Uh, Councillor Gaird, again, your hands raised, you haven't been able to vote, vote that's what I, pre I presume. Yeah, that's right. So that's my vote, yeah. Yeah, uh, for or against? For. Uh, Councillor Gale, for or against? For. Thank you very much. I've lost my chat box now, so I can't. Um... Excuse me, Chair. Uh, Excuse me, Chair. Uh, Councillor Williams. Yes, uh, Councillor Williams. I got something on the screen saying something went wrong. Please try again. But uh, I can't. It's not leaving, so Give I'll put my hand one up then, anyway. Give us a verbal one Give us a verbal vote. Yeah, yes, I uh, I support. Yeah. Could I clarify, my Mr. Chairman? I'm not sure, but I voted yes. Yes, in case. Right. Okay, that's fine. Come to do this. 
Uh, that's the majority as well. Yes, Jay, yeah. thank you. Right, the next one, we had three recommendations that were moved to be deferred until the current COVID impact is, un is, is ended. Now, this is 3.6, 3.9, and 3.7. <coughs> so wait to give Emma a chance in the chat function, there'll be a vote again. So we agree to defer these recommendations because of the current COVID crisis. And vote is now open. Vote is opened. And I've got four hands showing. Um, Come to Anne Gay, for or against? Four. Come to the Bob Owen, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, apologies. I think on the first vote, I didn't actually press submit just to let Kath know. On the first vote, I voted four. But I don't yeah, think okay. I. Thank okay, you, sorry about that. Absolutely no problem, thank you. Uh, come to the, Walter Williams. Thank you, Chair. It's worked OK this time. OK, thank you. Uh, come to Diane Price. Come to the Price. Hands gone down then. Um, just check on the ch chat box a moment. I think that's a, a majority as that's well. That's a majority. Yeah. OK. Fine. Thank you, Kath. Now, there's one more. Yeah. There's two more, actually. We got a couple more. Um, there was another recommendation that was moved and seconded for 3.10 and 3.11 for a report to come back to scrutiny. Yeah. So that, so that can be moved and seconded, and then a vote will be put in the chat. Adrian, I move, Jess Kirby. Uh, thank you, Jess. Uh, Councillor Kirby, uh, you got a second there? Yeah, I'll second up, Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, voting now open then. Councillor Gay. Four. Thank you. Councillor Gale. Four, but I think I've managed to vote this time. Oh, you have? Well done. OK, yes, thank you very much. Come to Dan Price. Have your hand raised? By raising your hand, comes the price. You're indicating you're in favour. Hands gone down. Uh, it's a majority anyway. Yeah. All right, Chair. The next one, we it was already been moved and seconded. It was agreed to uh, remove 3.12. So, if members can please formally now vote. We will create. We will agree that we will remove recommendation 3.12. Voting now open. Come to the gear. Four. Did you? Thank you. Four. Yes, Chair voted. I'll take. Thank you, Councillor Gale. And it's a majority anyway. And we have one final one. Um, it was agreed to defer and for it to be discussed with ward members 3.14. If you give Emma a second. Propose. Yeah, Councillor Cushing, we're just waiting for the vote to be loaded. And the voting is open. And Councillor Gay, your hand is raised. Four. Thank you. Anybody else have connection problems? No, I voted that time, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Gale. Yes. And that has a majority. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Kat, and thank you, Emma, in the background. Thank you very much indeed. Um, last, that's the uh, main body of the report and the agenda concluded for tonight.